Okay, so I'd like to just practice um, more related rate stuff. We're you know in decent shape, um, but I think it would behoove us to spend a bit of time circling back and hitting different related rates things just to make sure that we've got a good depth of understanding on this stuff. So this is just going to be me presenting a problem. I'd love you to pause it, give it a whirl, and then come back and see what the actual solution looks like. So I'm going to present problems. You're going to try them, and we're going to take them up. Alrighty. So imagine the following. Um, imagine that, you know, uh, Jad has typically, as usual, had an accident and he needs to clean up his spill with some paper towels. So we've got some paper towels here. Now, Jad has bought industrial paper towels that has no hole in the middle. They are simply a solid roll that goes through. So the dimensions of the paper towels are, it is going to be 15 centimeters in diameter. And it's got a, you know, width or height, depending on how you think about it, of uh, it's big roll, 28 centimeters. Um, and so Jad is consuming paper towels at a rate of 10 per minute. Now, each paper towel has a volume of 1.5 cubic centimeters. Uh, okay, so there's a lot of the details. Uh, two questions. A, uh, when the diameter of the roll is 10 centimeters at what rate is the, I don't know, how about radius changing? And then question B, the spicier question, is going to be uh, same details. So when the diameter of the roll is 10 centimeters, at what rate is the surface area changing? Okay, so pause this, give it a whirl, uh, come on back. And so I'm going to do question A first and then question B, not surprisingly. Welcome back. Let's look at question A. So question A, we're going to want to know what rate the radius is changing at. Well, I know the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h, okay? Um, and that, that's all we really need to know for, the, for question A. So for question A, if we think about uh, what are our givens? Well, we're given that dv by dt is equal to, now he's using um, 10 per minute, and each one of them is 1.5. So at 10 of those, it's going to be 15 centimeters cubed per minute. Now, it's really important he's consuming them, so the rate of change is negative. So it's negative 15 centimeters cubed per minute is dv by dt. We know that we're going to have a snapshot moment, and our snapshot is going to be equal to well, when diameter is equal to 10, but in reality, we're much more likely to be using radius. So radius is going to be 5. Okay. Now, the other thing that's important to notice here is we've got some dimensions. This 28 always lend our, you know, critical thinking to what's static and what's dynamic. Well, dynamic is obviously going to be the diameter and the radius because they're going to change as the time progresses. But the height of the roll of the paper towels isn't going to change. So that 28 is static. So the height is equal to 28, and it is static. And because it's static, that means that we can substitute right away. So we know that the volume is going to be pi r squared times 28. So I'm just going to rearrange that. So it's 28 pi r squared is what the volume is for this particular scenario, okay? Good to know. So we know what dv by dt is and what we want. I didn't put in what our wants are. So our wants, we want to know at what rate is the radius changing. So we want dr by dt 
Okay, so we know what dv by dt is. Uh, we have a snapshot radius and we need dr by dt. So we can go ahead and we can differentiate right on the spot. So this is going to be uh, dv by dt is equal to 2 times 28. So 56 pi r uh, times dr by dt. We know what dv by dt is. It is negative 15. So we can put negative 15 in for dv by dt is equal to 56 pi, well, radius in this case for the snapshot is 5. And so we can now just solve for dr by dt. So I'm going to divide through both sides by the 5. And so that's going to make that negative 3. So we're going to have negative 3 over 56 pi is what dr by dt is. And so we can make our concluding statement. We can say, therefore, the radius is decreasing at a rate of 3 by 56 pi centimeters per minute. Um, and again, be really, really careful. We've got decreasing, so we're not going to say negative. If we said negative, decrease, that means it's an increase. So we're not going to say that. Next up, how is the surface area changing? That's going to be a little bit more challenging. Uh, so question B. So if you haven't done it yet, go ahead, pause the video and then come on back. All right. So we know that volume is equal to pi r squared h. Um, and hopefully we know that surface area is 2 pi r squared. That's the top and the bottom plus uh, 2 pi r h, 2 pi r h, okay? Um, so there's a the surface area. And we are have some givens. We are given the same things that we had up there. But given that we've just answered this problem, we can consider that a given to this problem as well. So we know that dr by dt is equal to negative 3 over 56 pi. And we know that dv by dt was negative 15 centimeters cubed per minute. And I guess I could say this was in centimeters per minute. Um, and we know that the height is going to be a static height in this case as well. The height in this case, the static height was, what was it? It was 28, I think. Yeah, 28. So our static height is 28. And we have a snapshot here as well. And the snapshot is going to be when r is equal to 5. <clears throat> so our wants, in this case, we want a, excuse me, DSA by dt. I want to know at what rate of change is the surface area when the radius is 5. Okay, so that's what we've got. So, you know, if I ask this question right off the bat, and then I didn't ask the scaffolding question of finding dr by dt, that's what you'd have to do first. But we've already got dr by dt. Um, and we know that H is static, so I can take my surface area and rewrite it. So it's going to be, uh, not D yet, but it's going to be surface area is equal to 2 pi R squared plus 2 pi R, and then our H is going to be 28. Now, I can't substitute in radius because that's a dynamic value. It's changing as the, as the problem progresses. So we're going to have 2 pi R squared plus 56 pi R. Okay. And that is surface area expression. Uh, and I want DSA by DT and I have DR by DT. So I can go ahead and differentiate right now. So we're going to have DSA by DT is equal to 4 pi R. And then that's going to be DR by DT. Or, yep, DR by DT plus 56 pi. And this is DR by DT. And that's all good because these we have values for each of those. So we can go ahead and we can substitute in. So we're going to have 4 pi and the radius is 5. And dr by dt is, what do we say it was? Negative 3 over 56 pi plus 56 pi times, uh, this is still negative 3 over 56 pi. That's going to go away. All right, so we're going to do some simplification here. So pi is going to go away with pi. Uh, 4 goes into 50. Does 4 go into 56? Yeah, 7 times 8, so it's 14. So 4 goes into 56 14 times. So we're going to have, this is negative 15 fourteenths. Uh, 56 pi and 56 pi goes away. So it's going to be minus 3 
um, but I'm going to multiply by 14 over 14, uh, 14 over 14. So we're going to have negative 15 fourteenths minus, ooh, I guess that's negative 42, or minus 42 fourteenths, which would give me a final answer of negative 57 fourteenths. So there it is. There is my DSA by dt in an exact answer, and that would of course be in centimeters squared per minute. So we would need to have our concluding statement. Therefore, the surface area is shrinking at a rate of uh, 57 fourteenths centimeters squared per minute. Now, I may have made a mistake in there because I did that all mentally, but the process remains correct. So go ahead and make sure that you check that all out. Okay, thank you. We're gonna, I'm gonna separate these problems into separate videos just so that you can tackle them one at a time. So come on back for the next one.